So now that you're an expert with table layout, are you ready for a deep dive into Scene2D UI buttons? This video will cover everything you will need to know about creating your own buttons, image buttons, text buttons, and image text buttons. We'll be building onto concepts we've learned from Scene2D Zero, so make sure to watch that first. The button is the foundation of any interactive user interface. You can get away with creating a simple menu composed entirely of buttons in most games. The button class is a basic kind of button that has no text. It reacts to a user clicking on it. Text button, image button, and other classes are derivative from this class. As you know, the appearance of Scene2D widgets is dependent on styles. The button style is largely composed of drawable elements. For example, the up drawable is the normal state of a button. The over state is what the button looks like when the mouse is hovering over the button. This is optional, though it is highly recommended for desktop and HTML5 games. It's nearly meaningless on mobile platforms unless the user has a mouse attached. Notice the subtle, darker edges on the button. You can do highlights, underlines, outlines. Use a technique of your choosing to illustrate the difference from the normal state. The down state is what the button looks like when it's pressed. It's an optional field, though there isn't much reason to not support this state. This example looks like it's pressed in to sell the appearance. The disabled state isn't always necessary, especially if you don't plan on ever disabling the button in-game. When it is important to denote that the button cannot be touched, you can make it slightly transparent, washed out, or darker. Now, let's talk about toggle buttons. Normal button does not have any value for checked or checked over. If you want the button to stay depressed after it's clicked on, you usually make the check state look the same as your down state. For extra flair, you can have a checked over state, which should just be a slight variation. You can actually use this technique to make a switch button that shifts from yes to no or on to off. The focus state is a somewhat newer addition to button. This is important to set if you want to allow your users to use the keyboard to navigate your menus. A drawable that shows that this button is highlighted will be suitable here. Though again, this is absolutely not useful on mobile. You'll see fields for pressed offset X, pressed offset Y, and the like. These will appear to do nothing for now. These actually affect the contents of the button, which is more important for other kinds of buttons. We'll talk about that later when we get into text button. For now, I'll be stepping through how you can draw these buttons in Illustrator, but feel free to take these techniques to your favorite drawing software. So you can just draw a rectangle. Done. This is your first button, but this could use a little more finesse, right? I'm going to add a stroke to the outline of the shape. This makes it clearer that it's a button that users are supposed to interact with. Round corners are a sophisticated kind of polish. They are more friendly to users, though it depends on the theme you're going for. If you have a futuristic action game, you might want buttons with sharp corners for that aggressive technological feel. Kids games might want round, soft buttons. The human brain is easily fooled by UI elements. Even though monitors only display on two dimensions, we have trained ourselves to see buttons as having depth whenever they have a drop shadow. This is another signal to the user that this element should be clicked on. Often this is further conveyed with an imaginary light source from above, causing a kind of highlight or gradient. Make sure that these effects are cast from the top or top left. People having used UI systems for most of their lives, have been trained to see buttons as having light shine from above. So for a basic, almost cartoonish button, I'm going to make a white highlight on the top left and a shadow on the bottom right. For a more advanced button, I can keep the same highlight and shadow, but add some transparency to them. Then add a matching gradient to the button itself. Making the button move through the pseudo 3D space sells the effect even more. Here I'm just going to make a duplicate of my up state and nudge it down by a pixel or two for our down state. Adjust your drop shadow by the same amount in the opposite direction. 
This makes it look like the button is being pushed into the surface. Making the rest of the states is a similar process. Just copy the up state and make some minor changes. Over. Disabled. Focused. We'll reuse the down state for checked, but you can make a different image for the state if you found it necessary. We can also make a variation of it for checked over, and we'll export these into PNG files to add to a skin later. You won't actually use a plain button like this very often. Since it does not have text or content of any kind, the derivative button classes like text button are much more useful. One exception is that you can use a plain button as a sort of icon button. These are buttons that use symbols to represent functions like mute audio or close the window. We're going to draw a simple symbol and place it in a circular shape. Add some varying effects for all of our different states. It's not complicated at all. The next step is incorporating these images into a skin. There are different approaches to making a skin. You could create a skin programmatically, or you could manually write a JSON file to be loaded with the skin loader. It depends on your chosen workflow. For simplicity, we'll use Skin Composer, which will make short work of this whole process. After you make a new project, import the drawables you'll be using for your button style. Drawables are the visual components that make up a style, and in this case, that's simply all the images you just made. We could use the images just as they are but we'll run into problems if we try to stretch our widget later. Most buttons need to adapt to different sizes. In most cases, you will need to use something like a nine patch to preserve the corners and the thickness of your strokes. See the links in the description for more on these subjects. We'll just quickly define the patches for the upstate, then apply those same patches to the rest of the images. We do need to make a slight modification to the down state because we did make it go down by a couple pixels when we drew it. This also applies to your checked and checked over states. Now that the drawables are sorted, we can just apply it to our button. It works. I'm going to copy the style and make a toggle button. Setting the checked field is all that's needed, really. We'll create a new style for the icon button, but the process is nearly the same. Let's incorporate this test skin into a project. I always like to have a demo project that is ready to test any sort of UI. It's just a basic one-page libgdx app with a stage and a root table. You run it, it just shows a blank screen. Perfect. Now export your skin JSON to the project's asset folder. Then instantiate a skin like this. Adding a button is a simple task. It's just a couple lines since all the details are in the skin. This creates a button with the default style. Easy. Making the button actually do something is another matter. You need to add a change listener to your button to make your button function. A change listener is a common type of listener used throughout Scene2D UI that is triggered when a widget is interacted with. Don't confuse it with click listener. Every time you use a click listener, you make a puppy cry. Click listener does not respect the disabled state of buttons. Don't make the puppy cry. In your game, you'll insert the code that will set a value, change screens, or activate some player ability here. If your button doesn't respond to the player clicking it, it usually means that you forgot to set the GDX input set input processor. On a side note, if you want to clean up this code and use a lambda expression instead, you can create a basic helper method and call it something like onChange. It will save you quite a bit of hassle when you're creating menus outside of the test environment. Now if we want to add our toggle button, 
We'll create it the same way, but pass in the name we assign to the style in our skin. To check if the button has been selected, use the method isChecked. Since you're using the button inside of an anonymous method, you have to make sure that the button is final, or at least effectively final, in the latest versions of Java. That means it needs to be a unique variable name. Now, if we want to see what a disabled button looks like, we'll add set disabled true to the button. When we try to click it, it will do nothing. And for completion's sake, here is our icon button. This is an example of the focused field working. The details of how this works are beyond the scope of this video, but it's not too hard to see how you can do it. I wrote a more detailed example a long time ago with my Shadow Walker UI if you're curious. If you're new to Scene2D, you'll become familiar with the mantra, everything is tables. Take it from the author John Green who wrote the famous book, Tables All the Way Down. Yes, even Button, the most basic of all widgets, is just another table. By extending table, Button allows you to add anything you want into it. These can be labels or images, for instance. You might want to do that if you need finite control over the layout of the internal component. But why do that if you can use text button and image button where this code has already been worked out for you? Let's get into text button. Text buttons are composed of a button and a label. Color is used to change the appearance of the text as the button is hovered over or pressed. You need to make a bitmap font of some kind to serve as the text. This will be applied to the label that is added to the button. We can do that easily in Skin Composer, but feel free to use whichever tool you want. Make sure to color the font characters as white. If it's any other color, it will affect how it's tinted later on. Remember, you can't tint anything that is pure black. Set the bitmap font as the font value. Change the font color to tint the font to its normal color. Down font color is the color when the button is pressed. Usually this is the same as the font color, so we can actually just leave it blank in this case. There are colors for when the button is hovered over or focused. If you know you want to disable a button in your interface, set the disabled font color. I usually go with a gray or slightly transparent color to make it really look disabled. The rest of the fields are exactly the same as the fields found in the button style. This time, however, your content padding from your nine patches are important to consider. With this text button, I took special care to set the padding so that the text does not overlap the borders of the button. And since this has a pseudo 3D look, I was careful to adjust the padding so the text will move with the button as it's pressed. Let's say you forgot to do that setup, or maybe you're not using nine patches at all. Instead, you can use the field pressed offset Y to move the text down. Set it to a negative number to move the content down. To create the text button in code, you don't really have to do much different. Just pass in the string that you want to be displayed as the text. If you want to change the text programmatically, you can always call set text to display something else. Get text returns the current text. If for some reason you need to modify the label associated with the text button, you can always call get label. This is nice for setting the text alignment. If you want to change the layout of the label cell, call get label cell. So there's another variation of button called image button. Instead of a label being added to the contents, it's an image. You can use these as a kind of icon button, but the advantage is that you can set the style to automatically change the image's appearance separate from the background. You can set separate images for the different states of down, over, etc. But if you intend to use the same image, you can just specify image up. A common error is confusing the fields for the background up, down, over, and the like with the image fields, image up, image down, image over, and the rest. The difference is clear as day when you see them all in context, but people still screw it up.
Image text button just combines what you've seen from text button and image button. It displays the image first and then the text to the right. I often overlook this class because I would prefer to have more control over the layout of the images and text. Now that you've practiced with button, you'll find that the rest of the UI widgets are pretty straightforward to deal with. All involve some combination of colors, drawables, and bitmap fonts for the most part. It's the nuances of the code and design that set them apart. You're the only one that was nearly as strong as me. Buddy, you think you look strong? You're just a cheap fucking knockoff. Oh, no, no, no. I'm the upgrade. <laughs>